Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com slash comedy podcast network. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Podcast Land and welcome to another sports 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 podcast. I am Joel Anderson. I'm Jordan Palmaville. And joining us as always is the sports outsider Phil Ranta. Finally, Joel got through the intro without screwing yeah. up. We we might have done a couple of takes. Yeah, that. a couple of takes. <laughs> a couple of takes. The intro hasn't changed I ever. Just, I grew yeah. a big white beard like a cartoon when something's happening for a long time. Do do we have to tell the people at home about this? Is yeah, this something they need to know about. Yeah, I'm now ninety. <laughs> Well, maybe then you'll be a little more interesting. Yeah. Oh, oh, what? Oh. Nine-year-olds aren't interesting. They're always like, medicine. Yeah, they, <laughs> they have stories to tell Grandpa? about that medicine. Grandpa, was that medicine gra- no. is gone. See? That's a great story. <laughs> the blacks took it. No. <laughs> that's what old people say. Oh, no. That's what nine-year-olds say. Oh, dear. I don't say that. Not that. That's what 90-year-olds used to say 10 years ago. Well, that's true. Now 90-year-olds say something like, I, you know what? I'm not sure. They're like, I fucked Paul McCartney. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's what 90-year-olds all say now. If they're 90 now, uh, you know, we're not doing the math and when they would have fucked Paul McCartney. What do we have on the decket? Well, we got, we're going to talk about sports. Oh, wow, that oh. sounds like a different Oh, thing. shit. I might be I might I didn't be study up on this. I'm I... something of an outsider on the topic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, Phil, did you catch any games this week? No. I was very busy this week, so I had to put off all my game watching until never. <laughs> Did you catch glimpses? I always, I always wonder because in day to day life, it's it's sometimes hard. Sports permeates our culture. Yeah, right. If, if I have like taped a game and I'm gonna go home and watch it, I find it difficult. To not find out what the score was. But it's maybe amazing. did you pass a television at a, at a Best Buy, maybe, where they had games on? That's the greatest thing, though, is when you don't care about sports, it doesn't even register. Like, it might as well be a, a commercial for Paxil. <laughs> it just doesn't register. Is, I might have is, walked by a screen. Paxil? I don't know. Paxil is <laughs> one of those drugs you take a bunch of, then you get liquored up, you do crazy things. Yeah. I, I doubt that's how they market it. <laughs> that is, that's the whole commercial. Get fucked up on Paxu. You might do some stuff you'll regret. <laughs> we just had a phone call with the FDA. They have some concerns. Uh, <laughs> they got some concerns. Marketing. Uh, but yeah, all right, Phil, no games. Yeah. Uh, one, just like the intro, no games for Phil. No. Same as always. Yeah. Uh, Plenty of games, no sports. What's going to be different about games. this podcast from all the others? Well, do we have a weird sport? You're goddamn right we do. We sure do. But but this time we have something we have something new. Yeah, we also have not a weird sport. Wait a second. It's that it's, sounds something like a ripoff well, of my trademarked segment but weird it, sports. But it can't be because it says it's not. Yeah. Oh, I I don't know about this, guys. It's, it's kind of my we're, we're thing. Gonna, we're going to talk about cycling. Which, to a lot of Americans, seems like a weird sport. But I'm going to try and and let you guys know it's actually pretty cool. It's pretty normal. Yeah. I've seen people if, riding if, their bikes. If, yeah, if you were in France, you'd think it was the bee's knees. It would be like the Super Bowl for you. So In France? Well, yes, in France. What do the French have besides baguettes and Gerard Depardieu? Uh, wonderful, wine. Wonderful. <laughs> wine. And the baguette. Fromage. <laughs> Beaucoup de fromage. <laughs> but yes, mostly baguettes and Gerard Depardieu. Uh, what, what else is on the deck? What All right. Oh, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk more Olympics. Oh, yep. ah. Olympics coverage. Specifically, I believe we're talking about mascots yes, today. Yes, we're talking about oh. Olympic mascots today. Classic. That sounds like fun. Supreme Court's ruling on the Affordable Care Act. Oh, yeah. big one. I have insurance one. now, right? Well, here's the thing. Yeah. Well, well, no, <laughs> if you don't, you're you're gonna want to get it, or you're gonna pay. You're gonna pay a tax. That was the big thing. It is apparently not a penalty. But a tax. Yeah, according to the Supreme Court, a bunch of fogies. <laughs> what do they know? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, not just a good idea. It's the law. Yeah. Health yeah. insurance. Um, uh, no, so if you're like me, anytime there's a big political event, sometimes I try to break it down and, and formulate, you know, my own opinion. But then usually I, I break down and just see what famous people have to say. Right. Okay. Because 
they're probably more in the know than me. Yeah, yeah. famous people get they their got, briefs every morning. They get they got the microphone too. Yeah, their butler comes in and gives them the news rundown. So now we have some uh, athletes most happy with the affordable uh, health care. Okay, oh, here great! We go. Who's that? Grady Sizemore. Don't oh, know. Yeah. He, Yao Yao Ming. Yeah. That's uh, tall guy. Yeah. <laughs> every NFL running back. <laughs> that makes sense. They yeah. get hurt a lot. <laughs> Constantly. Who's now? Who is unhappy with with this uh, this the Affordable Care Act? You're oh, wondering. No, it's... Well, it's Indy car drivers. Oh, okay. Wait, it's... they get hurt all the time. <laughs> it's NASCAR drivers. Oh, because they're Republican. <laughs> yeah. And and Greg Oden. Now here's why Greg Oden feels like it doesn't go far enough because NBA teams are still permitted to not sign him based on his pre-existing conditions. Oh, yeah. oh that makes yeah, sense. Insane. <laughs> Now, athletes most uh, happy about prescription drug coverage. Uh oh. Who's that? Who's that oh, gonna it's be? Brian Braun. Bazing. Yep, yep probably. <laughs> the U.S. Olympic team. Bazang. <laughs> <laughs> Just the shady members, though. Oh yeah, right. not our no, heroes. No, no. The ones, the, the ones that finished fourth, and yet yeah, yeah. the, the ones those were are... Canadian, actually. Oh, yeah. okay, I was close. Yeah, they were, they were, they, so they were smoking the BC bud. Yeah. yeah. Which, which, by the way, by no stretch of the imagination could you call that a performance enhancing drug? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I don't know. In snowboarding, it does because they're like, I can fly. Uh, I, don't, I, don't I don't think it works I like that. Zip like around they're probably in circles. better snowboarders when they're not smoking pot. Yeah. A. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, Roger Clemens' wife, because of anticipated future advances in medication for small testicles. <laughs> ah, bazoom. <Yeah>. Zingo! <laughs> uh, most disappointed that the expansion of Medicaid was deemed unconstitutional. Oh. Mm, yeah, most disappointed. The 60% of NBA players who are broke within five years of retirement. <laughs> Boom! Makes sense. The 80% of former NFL players who are bankrupt. <laughs> yeah. And the family members of those same NFL players who will inevitably be murdered because of concussions or something. Yeah. Right? Most <laughs> of them. Yeah. That's, that's, it's, a, it's a very real problem. Yeah. It sounds like we should start the show on that note, <laughs> yeah, huh? Yeah, let's, let's kick it off. Dead families! <laughs> okay, guys, welcome to Not a Weird Sport. Still sounds a lot like my segment. Yeah. Well, no, because it doesn't have the intro. Yeah, that's Your true. Your segment has this hilarious intro. Right, people love that intro. We get mail specifically I about get hired the intro. to go to birthday parties and go, Happy birthday! That's how popular our podcast is. <laughs> we yeah. hired this retarded Especially guy to come in and say happy birthday to Jimmy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we didn't know he was a podcast. I got a podcast, of course you do. <laughs> I am a podcast! <laughs> okay, but... The reason I bring this up is because I am a big fan. Well, once a year, for a month, I am a big fan of road racing, cycling. Oh, I well, road, road racing, racing has to be in cars. Yeah, road right. cycling. It's like pole position, the video well, game. Well, in cycling, you got track <laughs> cycling and you got road racing. Okay. So All this right. would be cycling and specifically road racing. And beginning on July 1st, the Tour de France, hey. the premier event in the entire sport. Is beginning. I'm going to go ahead and call it the Tour de France because I live in America. I'm going to go ahead and call it the Tour de Lance. Am I right? Oh, boom. <laughs> you would have been several years. I'm going to call it the Tour of France <laughs> yeah, because that that's the only really word that. that's different than English. Well, out here, the Tour of California is just the Tour of California. Good. And in Italy, the it's the Giro d'Italia. And in Spain, it's the Vuelta No, that's that one chef on Food Network, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah exactly. Uh, oh, he's got great oysters. So anyway, it's a I she. Just, <laughs> Damn it. She's got a great clam. I oh, want to give you guys no, some details look. here. Uh, just sort of break it in and, and try and let our viewers at home know a little bit about what this is and why I think that may should, they should maybe give it a shot. Okay. It's, it's a bike race for a month. Yes. That's insane. First of all, <laughs> it is a month-long bike race. Do they They're, have to go 24-7? No. But you were talking like... <laughs> you, you can't shrug. I just yeah. shrug. They ride their bike for a month. What are you, 24-7? Yeah. Well, no, but they they bike for, what, a couple hours a day and then drink wine? No, no it's, it's the it's, whole day. Uh, it's Yeah, well, not, not the whole Eight day. Eight hours? But, uh, probably more like six, I want oh, to say. six-hour work day. Uh, well, yeah, but they, they bike about, they average about 25 miles an hour. Okay, they do like 25 of these. By the end of the Tour de France, they will have biked, uh, and it depends on the year, but about two thousand miles they're gonna put in in a single month so that's like biking from here in los angeles to i don't know like say st louis yeah for six a hours a day 
I work more than six hours a day. I double their work See, hours. You don't, you don't really work, though, as compared to these guys. Oh, whoa, though. Joel. Oh, whoa. How many calories do you think you burn in the course That's of a That's a different kind day? of work. I, would, I burn I would imagine they, they could do your job and not be as tired. Yeah. Oh, I don't think because, that's true. Because of their experience cycling. Well, they would get bored quicker because they're like, all I know how to do is pedal a bicycle. <laughs> they don't talk like that. Oh, You're I know how to do That's what you sound like really at birthday parties. I can know a bicycle. Uh, but but here's, here's the thing, guys. This is what I think is most fascinating about the Tour de France. Now, on a lot of given days, you're probably going to tune in, and I'll be the first to admit, not a lot's going to happen. It's a long, sure. flat stage. There's a sprint at the end. Not a ton going on. But what the Tour de France is really about is finding that absolute edge of human endurance. Coming to that point where they've created this crucible through this entire race where there are those moments, those couple of hours out of all of the bike racing they're going to do where one guy is going to reveal that he's just in better shape than anybody else. And that really comes on the mountain stages. That's when you got to watch. And this is when they basically bike up a mountain for like two straight hours. That's insane. Yes. That is insane. Right. And somewhere like an hour and 40 minutes into it, when basically, I mean, this is, this is, we're talking like, there's like the 200 best cyclists in the world and all of them can't keep up with like the five guys. Who but are really they've the just had 18 hours of rest before that. Phil, you really, you really, you're really not giving this up. After 18 hours of sitting around in an oxygen tent, I could bike up a mountain. I don't think you could, Phil. I think I could. I, I would be willing to put some money in the fact that you probably couldn't do this. Well, where's a mountain and my bike? <laughs> this actually, Someone get my huffy. I'm riding up a mountain. <laughs> you're not going anywhere, Phil. Okay. <laughs> hey, you're not going anywhere. Guys, hey, uh, shut Phil, up, the Phil man. Phil's going to take off at the end of the podcast. He's heading to the nearest mountain. He's going to try and bike up with his huffy. At try the and. Try. You know what? You're going to get hit by a no car because you don't know the bike turn signals. Yeah. That's, and well, in Los yeah. Angeles, people do know those. And if you, don't, if you don't do the left arm out or the right arm in and... Hokey, I don't know what the fuck, but you're going to get hit by a car. And die. I thought that the bike turn signal in L.A. was, these are my cans. <laughs> <laughs> Every time they do that, I back my car back a little bit. I'm like, all right, they're your cans. Point is, tune in next week to find out how Phil's attempt to climb, let's say, Mount Baldy. That was the queen stage in the Tour of California. It's only a couple hours away. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Let's see how Phil's attempt to climb it goes. Okay. It, it, in, in your, going in your favor? It'll be paved. Hey, there we go. Yeah, you will not be going up terrain just in a bicycle. Phew. Sports, 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 Okay, guys, uh, we're going to broach one of my favorite slash least favorite subjects involving the Olympics. Ooh, it's an enigma. Yeah, in, in, in that I find it both, I mean, kind of hilarious how awful it is, but also yeah. just supremely awful, the Olympic mascots. Oh, Olympic mascots. Yeah, every time they debut the new Olympic mascot, I'm just like, this is the product of just like the worst boardroom corporate art by committee you could possibly come up with. They are uniformly stupid. They've gotten progressively sillier. And they've feel, gotten right. a lot worse. And, and you know, it, for a lot of them, actually, they did at least stick to animals. There's something to be said for that. But then there's also several occasions where somebody decided they wanted to get really creative. And that was a terrible idea. And I thought that we would just talk about a few of the Olympic mascots throughout the I was going to say, when I imagine an Olympic mascot, I imagine it being like... Bonzo, the gender neutral blob. <laughs> like, it's just something with eyes. Yeah. And then it's like, like Hala. You'd be pretty close. The to honesty. That. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Something, an, an abstract noun. Yeah. Is what exactly. I <clears throat> it's more of a concept than it is an, uh, a mascot. Well, all right. So take yourselves back to 1968. Oh, I was okay. dead. And if I take myself back there, I wouldn't be around. Do, 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 do. It's just a shot away. It's just <laughs> oh, a yeah. shot. We got to do the 1968. Ooh, they yeah. play. Give me shelter. If you want, yeah. if you want to set something in 1968, you have to play "Give Me Shelter." Yeah, I, I believe. I believe you're right. Contractually obligatory. So, uh, the 1968 Winter Olympics in Grenoble. Uh, wait, wait, that's wait, not Grenoble? a place. Grenoble. Is that like Chernobyl's little brother? Uh, well, I believe it's, uh, it's Chernobyl high Germany, school football sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Go Chernobyl. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, Chernobyl used to dominate Grenoble in high school football up until the incident. Yeah, well, we all know. That they then wrote diaries about and then made a movie after it. Shh, yes, I haven't indeed. seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. That oh. being said, we got a no. we, we got a few mascots to get through here. The, the, let's, the, let's kick the this whole off, folks. the whole movie is just them going too soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's the eighties. It's not that soon. Yeah. Is it? Okay, so nineteen sixty eight Grenoble Shoes, a stylized skier, was the unofficial mascot. Thus a kicking human. off. Human. Yeah. Well, he's a skier. Yeah. Shoes. Shoes. Shoes the skier. Shoes. I am Shoes the skier. I have Grenoble. <laughs> I like, I like to skate down the hills. The the designer uh. was Mademoiselle Lafargue. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I'm probably not pronouncing it. Shoes, right. a skier. So. I, I, have written, I have made a skier character named Shoes. They will represent the Olympics with much valor. Yeah, so moving That's what along. sounded like. <laughs> we had, let's see, the 1976 uh, Winter Olympics in Innsbruck had Schneemann, who was a snowman who looked... Kind of weird, as you can see up in the corner. It there. looks like a rabbit. Yeah, it kind of kind of looks like a rabbit. A snowman, uh, though. Good mascot for the Olympic Games. Yeah, I a lot like of that. snow. Everyone's covered up in uh, snow. Especially if on the last day of it, they had him put out the torch with his body, and then he's like, <laughs> the no, melting of the no, snowman no, represents the well, end is, of the Olympic that would, Games. That would be a little morbid, but pretty good. 1980. Right. We can see the wheels start to come off a little when we have. Ronnie the raccoon for the Lake Placid Olympics is designed Ooh. by Donald Moss. Um, so it, it was named for the Adirondack Mountain Range. Little white trashy. Yeah, and Ronnie the raccoon and a raccoon. I mean, there's a reason why no one has gone with that. But the raccoon is pretty much a really big, resourceful rat. It's it's yeah. a rodent. It is in the rodent yeah. family. Right. It scavenges through garbage. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. Yeah. And then you yeah. go out with a broom and you go, go on, get Get, right. get. And then the raccoon goes. <laughs> and then you train it to sit on your head so it appears you're wearing a coonskin cap. And that's how we beat the Mexicans at the Alamo. <laughs> yes, indeed. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, you can really start to see the wheels completely come off here in 1992. In Albertville. There... Wait, where, where's Albertville? I think it's in Canada. He said questionably. Uh, we Albertville. Should, how did you have cities and not countries? I after just these? love that it's. I don't know. I, it, it just it has uh, it has the it has the city it has the Olympics it has the city. Summer was Barcelona that name, year. What they are? I imagine Albertville is probably like a town with a population four hundred that just went to the Olympics committee and they're like, we like the Olympics. Well, no one else is here. Yeah, except Detroit. <laughs> and they were all going. Albertville's big, right? It's, <laughs> oh yeah, biggest biggest anyway, in Albert Albertville, County. Albertville <laughs> uh, had magic. <laughs> Uh, who is described oh. as a man star slash snow imp. What? what? Whoa, back yeah. it up. Men's, man star? Man star slash snow imp. There no, shouldn't I be a slash. No. Yeah. And <laughs> it's snow, one or the snow other. Snow imp I can even get behind. I don't know what a man star is, even is. It's a star, only it's male. It's got a dick. It's a star with a dick. I feel like Freddie Mercury was a man star. Yeah, that makes sense. I'd buy that. <laughs> yeah. That's a terror. That's not, that's like, that's not a mascot. That's like a dream. Oh yeah. Well, no, it gets a lot worse. Uh, in the 1996 summer Olympics, Atlanta, hot, yes, hot Atlanta, the terrorist Olympics it was Izzy. I can kind of picture that one. I kind of no, remember no, no. it. Izzy, who is only described as an abstract figure, right? He had a backwards have, head, didn't he? We have a picture of him right here. Go ahead and look him up at home, people. He's kind of a cartoon character where you're like, oh, that's a cartoon character. I don't know what it is. It Wait, looks, so he they, looks like an exclamation point. Eyes. He was he was just debuted as What's It in Barcelona in 1992. Huh. Uh, so just sad state of affairs in 1996. That's no good, and that does not yeah. represent anything atlanta ease. Uh, Brought to you by yeah. Coca-Cola. For a Drink while, it. they got back to animals, they started to really add, like, you know, their explanations, uh, you know, like what this animal symbolized, which got yeah. really elaborate and, and out of hand. I couldn't read Should all be of them. the Olympics every time. Yeah, yeah. This it, animal it symbolizes or sport. Just, <laughs> this, is, this is kind of a cute thing. Uh, so in the 2004 Summer Games uh, in Athens, that's yeah. in Greece. Right, right. Uh, they, they went with Athena and Phavos. Who were like a brother and sister. Oh. Right. Okay. Here's the problem. They they modeled them after this terracotta statue of a Greek god. Huh. Right there. Which made them look really bizarre and not at all like humans. Kind of like E.T., but oh. more terrifying. 
that's not good. It no. looks, and I feel bad saying this, but it looks like a dick with arms and legs. Yeah. <laughs> Greek gods are supposed to be like sexy people. Yep. And they looked like Powerful. two dicks with arms and legs. Uh, that's too bad. Unfortunately, the, the 2006 Winter Olympics in Turin felt the need to top them when they went with Neve and Gliz, which were a humanized snowball and ice cube. No. <laughs> what? Yeah, and you're that's and, horrible. Well, see, yeah. this what where it doesn't make sense is a snowball and an ice cube. They they'll never get along. Right, right. Everyone knows <laughs> it's that. The perfect sitcom. Snows hate ice. Ice hates snow. One is a snowball. One <laughs> is an ice cube living together in an apartment. Uh, yeah, and and you turn the heat up again. <laughs> and, and, and here's the other thing: you think that's winter Olympics? Like. You think it's, it's you know <laughs> stuff you do outdoor in the winter time. Here's the thing, though. An ice cube is an entity that only exists in a person's freezer. Right. Like, it's not like a snowball. You're like, oh, that's outside. That's oh, an ice cube. A snowball like, naturally existing. Yeah. yeah. Ice cubes ice are cubes, made by man. You got to form the ice. But All here's right. the thing. They were going to do the ice icicle, but they're like, oh, we just don't want to have a huge dick like Athens did. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> don't want to look like Athens. So, moving on. Last one here, guys. We're going to skip to... Our current Olympic Ooh, mascot. 2012. Uh, the official mascots for the upcoming one, uh, Olympics in London. Fingers crossed, James oh, Bond. Come on. Yeah. No. Oh, uh, I hope that's Mr. Bean. Oh. Wen oh. Wenlock and Mandeville, described as drops of steel with cameras for eyes. I'm going to show you the picture here. What? Real quick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No. Drops no. of steel. Yeah. With cameras with for cameras for eyes. Let me see yeah. that. Over and, there. and I, I want to read some of the no. description to you guys because oh, they're like frightening uh, robots. I I think if you were trying to come up with a really stupid mascot, I don't know if you could top this. <clears throat> uh, they were also also the the mascots of the Paralympics. Oh, a Co couple of jokes in there that I have the taste not to make, but uh, they are mascots that look like aliens. Dur. Uh, Unveiled. Uh, let's see. They, Anything that looks like nothing, it looks like an alien. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they yeah, were created absolutely. and designed by Iris, a London-based creative agency. Uh, to the people at home, if you need a creative agency and you're in London, I would not suggest Iris. No. I wonder how much they got paid for this pieces of crap. Uh, their animations depicting two drops of steel from a steelworks in Bolton. I imagine that's some sort of blue-collar suburb of London. Yeah. Uh, they are named after the Shropshire town of Muck, Muck Wenlock, which held a forerunner to the current Olympic Games. Hey, there we uh, go. That might be the one that we talked about for. That and is. Stoke Mandeville Hospital, a facility in Buckinghamshire. Didn't make that up. Actually, Buckinghamshire. We've talked about Buckinghamshire and weird sports. Initially organized the Stoke Mandeville Games, a precursor of the Paralympics. So they there named it after a dying industrial city and a <laughs> hospital. Yep. Is what they named their mascots after. That's terrible. And again, their mascots, drops of steel with Ugh. cameras for eyes. Yeah. So here's the thing. And you they kind of look like aliens. Yeah. You say our mascot's a fox and people go, oh, I know what a fox is. Or I know what a fox looks like. Even like the Oklahoma City Thunder. By the way, terrible mascot. I actually cannot picture Awful. thunder as yeah. it is sound. But yes. I do at least. <laughs> they look like waves. Know what thunder <laughs> is. Yeah. Drops of steel. I'm like, I have never seen steel. No, in no, Joel. Form. But they've got cameras for eyes. That's yeah. so. You can picture eye cameras, right? <laughs> but here's the thing: a camera like records things. It doesn't necessarily pass that information on to their brains. Are we saying that they're blind? That everyone except them can see what they see? That's just tragic. Yeah, that I is. I don't think anyone made that conceptual leap. I hope yeah. not. <laughs> For you, the listeners of Sports 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 Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. I personally recommend a wonderful book called The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Joel saw the movie. He said that it was okay. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash comedypodcastnetwork. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash comedypodcastnetwork for your free audiobook. And now it's time for another Weird Sports! Now 
this had better be especially weird, weird. sports. Oh, oh, dude, you cut him off. Really stepped on. Joel. I forgot about the. It's Joel. the same every fucking time. Just like Joel's the intro. Brain is we not haven't in changed. It today. Do you want to do it again? No, let's keep going. All right. Well, I was just gonna say that this better be especially. Blah, 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 blah. See, it doesn't feel good to get stepped on, does it? <laughs> doesn't feel too good. No, it doesn't. I, I'm apologizing. I could, you, you're right. I, That's all right. This is going to be a hell of a weird sport. We're bringing it back. All yeah. right? We're getting this back. Today's weird sport, Tough Guy. That's, that's, that's oh, oh, I like the name. Tough guy. They, they, uh, they're, they're setting the bar pretty high here. Okay. I'm yeah. just going to lay that out. There. This sounds like this sounds like something, you know, like an uncle used to say to me. Yeah. yeah. Hey, tough guy. Hey, tough guy. Hey, you think you're tough, tough guy? <laughs> well, let's play some tough guy. It's like the guys who play ice hockey are pretty tough, and they still called their, their sport hockey instead of just tough people. Right. You know why? Because this sport, tougher than hockey. Ooh. What do you got? Tough guy claims to be the world's most demanding one-day survival ordeal. Wow. This is the first sport we've had described as an ordeal. Yeah, yes. This is, this it's is not really even a, a co- weird survival ordeal. Yeah, it's not even like a competition. It's an ordeal. Fans go like, to it expecting a game, walk away going, that was an ordeal. That was quite the no, ordeal. I, I would argue those especially long cross-country skiing races they have in the Olympics, I would describe those as a survival ordeal. Right. I, I'd describe watching those as an ordeal. I think, oh! yeah. yeah. At the end oh! of it, I'm like, they should take a head count just to make sure everyone finishes. Right, it's true. Well, Tough Guy was first staged in 1987. The Tough Guy Challenge is held in a 600-acre farm in Purton, Stratfordshire, Stratfordshire, Staffordshire, near Wolverhampton, England. God bless the English. Yeah. They... I mean, this segment would probably not exist if not for that. It's we true. We would have run out of weird sports forever. Well, there. luckily it was organized by a British fellow named Billy Wilson using the pseudonym Mr. Mouse. <laughs> Deceptive for yep. a tough yeah. guy competition. He had to. Uh, it has been widely described as the toughest race in the world with up to one third of the starters failing to finish in a typical year. Oh, wow. Man. That's pretty insane. After 25 stages in the winter event, Wilson still claimed nobody has ever finished all the course according to his extremely demanding rules. The race and its summer equivalent has suffered two fatalities during its history. Holy crap. People be dying, y'all. You guys uh, that, are that, that, that was, that was, that was our wanna... moment. That was our moment of silence for the tough <laughs> for guy those competitors that have died and tough who guy. have fallen. That's smart. I poured uh, some of my 40 on the floor. Yeah, you by the way, you have to clean, clean that, that up, up because what? it's filthy. There are cables on the floor, too. That's yeah. really dangerous. Lots some of wires. Pillars. All right, let's get into a little bit about what it is, right? Taking place at the end of January, often in freezing winter conditions, the Tough Guy race is staged over a course between 7 and 8 miles, about 12 kilometers. It consists of a cross-country run, followed by an assault course, <laughs> What's this is? Yeah. claimed to be tougher than than any other worldwide, featuring 25 obstacles, including a slalom run up and down a hill, ditches, jumps, freezing water pools, fire pits, and so on. (laughs) And so on? It's the so on that freaks me out. I know, we want the so on. The organizers claim (laughs) that running the course involves risking barbed wire cut scrapes, burns, dehydration, hypothermia, acrophobia, claustrophobia, electric shocks, sprangs, twists, joint dislocation, and broken bones. Why is there barbed wire on the course? Because it's an obstacle course. <laughs> it's, it's an that's obstacle an obstacle. Course. Barbed wire is an obstacle, Jordan. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hard to get yeah, through. That's, yeah, very hard to get through. <laughs> very difficult. That's the one thing you could say about barbed wire. It's hard to get through. Yeah. Although the course is adjusted each year, it fe- its features have included a 40-foot crawl through a flooded underground tunnel. That's wow. insane. How that flooded? sounds like like flood, like you're underwater. Completely flooded. You yeah. could die. That, yeah. that is how oh, people you, die. You could be one or two people that die. Yeah, a crawl. I mean, I can swim underwater for right, at but least it's too narrow. Like Seventy five. Too feet. narrow. But if you can't swim, then that's a- how do you not panic? It feels like after a while you'd forget where the end is and you'd be oh, running yeah. out of air. You'd try to look that's for one of those crazy. air bubbles that come up from the ground. Right. And then go. go <gasps> I remember those from cartoons <laughs> and from video games. Yeah, I was thinking video games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, balancing planks across a fire pit. 
Bounce, this is a fire pit. Bouncing planks? planks balancing. Across, balancing, okay. This is what we all really wanted Double Dare to be. Yeah. <laughs> and there's also a half mile wade through chest deep muddy water. This is in January in England. <laughs> Through wow. muddy water. Oh, that would be terrible. So it's, it's basically bog snorkel- snorkeling. Right. At that point, for part of the day, this is yeah. an all-day course. Bog snorkeling, a subset of tough guy. Yeah. Uh, Marshall's dressed as commandos, fire amphibious tank gun blanks, and let off exploding fa- flares and smoke bombs over the head of the competitors as they crawl under a 70-meter section of barbed wire. Well, I'm ready to say, yeah, these guys might actually be tougher than hockey players. Because yeah. you're hearing these noises, people are shooting at you, you're bound to jerk your head up at some point right. and get it tangled in barbed wire. You get your head cut, y'all. And then you get your head stuck in barbed wire. Yeah, that would be terrible. That's the last place you want your head. You get stuck in barbed wire. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get it out of there. Yeah, you can't. Ugh. The more you fight, the more you get scratched. That's how barbed wire is designed. Uh, some runners took part in the event carrying heavy wooden crucifixes. What? Why would you do that? Because they're they're saying that this is like what Christ went through. Went the well, well, but by doing so, <laughs> yeah, Jesus just like carried the cross through a city. We street. will give you eternal life if you complete this obstacle course. <laughs> oh, that would be a great prize. And you get Jesus getting all psyched for it. But nobody's ever done it. No one's ever right. They banned that in the year 2000, by the way. Wait, wait. So for all of our Christian people out there. You say a heavy wooden cross. That's the thing. Why would you you add the element of difficulty of having to carry a cross with you? I don't know. Because you're a tough guy. Hey, you think you're a tough guy, huh? Or just like a ridiculous Jesus. This is the toughest part. to bear. Toughest part. Entry fees start at 39 pounds. 39 pounds? Right? 39 pounds of what? How are you going to raise that much money? That's... I mean, that's, that's crazy. That's like 70 bucks. $70. Oh, geez. I think a pound's like a buck 60. This is what makes it extreme. It increases by 35 pounds for every 300 people that sign up. Oh, so you got you to gotta, gotta get in there early. Even the signing up part it's is exactly badass. like Coachella, basically, More than what you told me. people sign up for this? Yeah. Uh, the event regularly attracts fields of up to 5,000 competitors. Holy freaking hell. Many from the United States. What is wrong with these? These people? are people that go on Ninja Warrior and do really good because they're in great shape. Yeah. And then they get their head caught in barbed wire. Right. And then they're like, oh, I've got face cuts. I'm going to be a beast. You see, N- Ninja Warrior, test test of, like, fitness, but not, like. They don't not, prepare you no. for barbed wire. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Nothing can do that. Uh, let, let's talk about some deaths and injuries, y'all. Please. 2000, one competitor, Michael Green, may he rest in peace, from uh, Leicestershire, Collapsed midway through the race and later died in the hospital. Reportedly of a massive heart attack brought on wow. by extreme hypothermia. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So yep. this is not, this is, yeah. I, I was assuming that people would be like falling off obstacles or drowning no, in man. tunnels. But Their no, body gives out. Body just gave out. That's, yeah. that's, that's terrifying. That's He was 44 years old. Oh. Probably too old to be r- racing this. Yeah. Yeah. Too old to do anything. Oh, come on. You're almost 44. Shut up. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, other other injuries suffering the event are common. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Broken neck, broken pelvis, broken Ugh. bone. Well, there were dozens of broken uh, 600 runners, get dislocated shoulders. Uh, one winner su- suffered hypothermia. Yada, yada, yada. He won the race. And, and, and the authorities are, are totally cool with this. Yeah. The national health has not said... Oh, hey there, guys. First of all, this is in Europe, which is not as litigious a culture as the United States. Right. Like, right. But you go they, to Europe and, like, I don't know, like in France, they'll leave cheese out at room temperature, and that's not a big thing. When right. You go to, like, cliffs, they don't have, like, railing and signs saying, like, hey, don't jump off the cliff. You know what's really fun about this, though? They got names for all of the obstacles. Ooh. I'm not going to say what they are, but I'm going to run down the list because they're fun to say. Yeah. Country Miles. Slalom. Gurkha Grand National, the Tiger, followed by the Sting in the Tail, <laughs> Scaffold Bridge, <laughs> Hold Its Walls, Behemoth, Battle of the Sum, Fiery Holes, Tire Crawl, Swamp, Viet Cong Tortured Chamber Tunnels, <laughs> wow. Skywalk and Paradise Climb, Splash Pool, <laughs> Underwater Tunnel, Brandon Burger Gate, 
Du Shavu Island, Death Plunge, Jesus Bridge, <laughs> Dan's Deceiver, Dragon Pools, Gladia Tough Coliseum, Stalag Escape, Tire Torture, Pedestrian Bridge, The Anaconda, <laughs> Viagra Falls, and finally, Torture Chamber. Which is different from the Viet Cong torture. Oh, very different. Well, that's the Viet Cong t- torture tunnel. And there's also tunnel, which yeah. is separate. Yeah. yeah. And then just regular torture chamber. I am I am trying to... I, I'm just imagining now, like, you're like, oh, man, next is the pedestrian bridge. You run up and you're like, oh, it's it's a walkway. Right. Oh, okay. the, well, traffic will stop and I'll just walk <laughs> across the bridge. Yeah. That was, that was not so bad. Perfect. I well, shudder to think what the behemoth would be. Oh, all the things Joel, you had it would haunt your nightmares Which one forever. Do you think the, what gets the name the behemoth out of all those? Well, we're going to have to compete to find out. You and sure you're going to be up for it after your bike ride up Mount Baldy? Oh, God, no. I'll be dead. <laughs> and that comes to an end. Another <laughs> Weird Sports! The, Joel, oh, you God. stepped on my line. I'm sorry, I didn't. Oh. And that brings us to the close of another sports, sports, sports podcast. Before we go, we'd like to give you our contact information. You can email us at sports, sports, sports podcast at gmail dot com. You can find us on Twitter at sports number three podcast. That's sports the number three podcast. You can find us on Facebook by searching sports, sports, sports podcast and little top bar thing. You can find us on iTunes by searching sports number three, all one word, sports number three, all one word, space podcast. You can find us on Stitcher Radio. Download the Stitcher app today and look for sports, sports, sports podcast. And you can find all our back episodes on comedypodcastnetwork.com. Oh, man. And you can find other great shows, Curtain Jerks. And, our, uh, sister our, sis- our, our sister, sister show, our sister show, curtain jerks. Uh, funny because it's true. Storyteller podcast, very mm-hmm. funny. Uh, you can read articles by other podcasters. It's great. Yeah, check it out, folks. See ya. Bye, Tom. You have received this transmission from the Comedy Podcast Network. For more shows, visit comedypodcastnetwork.com.